We're recording. Hello, class of 2023. This is Mr. Jacob Dean of Jims. You Dean for the class of 2023. This year has been a difficult year for every one of us. And through this time, we as warriors know how to get through adversity. We are counting on you to step up and parents, we need you during this time. I miss you parents during our cohort meeting as we had promised you guys will be doing this every year. This is the new normal and now we have to do it through virtual. Now I want to introduce our team. Ms. Rachel Schwerin. Hi, class of 2023 families. We are so grateful that you are here today to hear the information that we have to share with you. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us and let us know what we can do. Again, my name is Rachel Schwering. I'm the counselor for students with the last names A through K. Well, as you can see, as you can see, and you got the email that Mr. Clark moved on, you know, for family reasons closer to home. We have a wonderful replacement, Ms. Rhodes. And during that transition, I just want to publicly thank Ms. Schwerin for doing double duty during that time. And I know many of you guys had to see Ms. Schwerin, but again, that is what we do. We are a team that steps in for each other. So at this time, I want to introduce Ms. Christina Rhodes. Hello, class of 2023 students and families. I'm so excited to meet you all and join the WARN team. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions or just to say hello. Thank you so much for your welcome and I look forward to working with you all and I'll be working with families with the last names from L to Z. Thank you and have a great day. Wonderful. Now I'll be introducing again Ms. Bush. We call her a big auntie. You know, she's always there. She wears so many hats, you know, she's involved with a lot of our athletes as well with study table and she is our academic coach. She is that link, okay? If you're having trouble, please reach out to Ms. Bush. Ms. Bush. Hello, Warren parents and students. I am Ms. Bush and I'm here to help your students be academically successful. So if they have any academic needs, uh, please reach out to me and I'll be happy to help them. And next at this time is Ms. Bellamy. She is the face of the cohort. She's the person that you see when you, when you um, come into the office, students, you know, again, be nice to her. And she's gonna share, she wears so many hats as well. And Ms. Bellamy is my assistant. Please be nice to her. When you call, understand she's responsible for about a thousand students as well, Ms. Bellamy. Good morning, class of 2023, parents and students. I'm Mrs. Bellamy, here to assist you with any of your student services needs um, whenever you need me. Thank you again, Mrs. Bellamy. And uh, class of 2023, as I shared with you guys, parents, when we started this journey, and I said, I'm gonna be very transparent. I'm gonna share with you guys the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything, so that we are in this journey together. So this is where we ended up last year, 2019, 2020. 77.7% of the class of 2023 earned at least 10 credits last year. I'm proud of that, but we can do better. My goal was that we will be at 92%. We're not there, but we're still flying. 52% of the class of 2023 earned 14 credits last year. We need to do better. We need to do better and we need to use our resources. 65.3% of the class of 2023 missed less than five days of school last year. Thank you parents that made sure that the kids were in school every day. Grandparents, foster parents, you know, guardians, I thank you. But we need uh, other students to step up as well. 184, 184 students ended the year with a 3.0 GPA or higher. We need to do better. You guys know me well enough that I, we will always push you to do better. We need to increase that number by the end of the school year. I wanna take this time to congratulate our top 10 students that worked so hard 
I know you took it, taken this journey, but it's not by yourself. You have parents that have supported you, grandparents, aunts and uncles, and also using, making use of your team and your resources. Christian Heron. Yasmin Garcia Ramirez. Augustine Dow. Maggie Zeng. Amazon Maya. Malia Rice. Natalia Romo, Wide Art, Stacy Salazar, and Pila Sanchez. I destroy your name. I apologize again. Parents, I apologize if I destroyed the name. Okay, next, we are going to move to our safety and behavioral expectations while in the building and even while you're at home as a virtual student. Classroom expectations for my hybrid students. Wear your mask over your nose and mouth. I have a 77 year old mother. You have aunts and uncle, you have grandparents that we need to protect. So we need to make sure we follow the CDC guidelines to keep everybody safe. Bring your Chromebook to school and make sure it is charged. Charge it overnight to make sure it's fully charged when you come to school. Don't show up in the classroom and said, I need a place to plug my, my Chromebook. Last year, you were able to move that and move yourself. We have to maintain social distancing in a classroom to make sure that we are following the CDC guideline. Sit in your assigned seat. I understand, trust me, I know you miss your friends and you wanna chat about what happened over the weekend. Stay in your assigned seat. Eyes open and heads up, please. No hoodies in the classroom, no do rags, and no bonnet. So come to school prepared as a place of business. Take your attendance daily. When you log in, you will see the button there, take your attendance, including when you are on a virtual day. Make sure you are taking your attendance and make sure you're doing that every period. Lunchroom expectations. I just wanna say thank you to those students that have come in, sit where they're supposed to, get their meals, and do what they're supposed to do in the lunchroom. Sit in your assigned seat again during the lunchroom. Wear your mask when you are not eating. Throw away your trash. Please and thank you. You have great trash cans in the lunchroom. When the staff come around to pick out, just say thank you for doing that. Those are good, and that's part of our core. Maintain social distancing while getting your lunch. Please, it is very, very important. Again, we have to follow the CDC guidelines. Stay in the cafeteria. We are a closed campus. I want to go eat with my teacher. No, that is not happening anymore. I want to go to the media plex. No, we are a closed campus. We need to make sure we know where you are in case we have to contact race. We have to make sure we know that that's where you sat and you did not move to anywhere else. Always expectation. Yes, I miss my A and J. I'm in the K hallway now. Follow the directions, arrows in the hallway. Again, that is to keep everybody safe. Walk with a purpose. Like Mr. Shepler, principal says, walk with a purpose. You're going to class, you're going to learn. We have wonderful and great teachers waiting for you. Do not leave school without any release pass. Please stay. We wanna make sure you're safe. When you leave campus, is a safety concern. Is a safety concern for you? Is a safety concern for your parents and the entire school building? Again, we want you to stay in school and take advantage of the learning and our teachers, our wonderful teachers as well. There is a link in the bottom that talks about the mask policy and safety guidelines. You can click into that and please follow that as well too. If you have any questions about these parents, grandparents, aunt and uncle, please reach out to me. Students, you know you can email me anytime and I will get back to you in a timely manner. Thank you very much. And next, I'm going to pass on to Ms. Schwerin to address um, student expectations, virtual and initial credit apex. Actually, Ms. Bush is gonna cover that one. Ms. Bush? Okay. All right, student Thank expectations, you. virtual and initial credit. Um, so first, our virtual students. Um, virtual student guidelines, you need to log into Canvas every single day. 
log into Canvas every single day. Your, your teachers will post assignments, they will give you announcements, and you won't get that if you do not log into Canvas every single day. You need to check your school email every day, multiple times a day. Um, since teachers can't see you, since your counselors and your team can't see you, we can only communicate with you via email. So please um, check your email every day. Um, on black days, on black scheduled days, that is when you will receive instruction videos and activities. Students, you have to log on and watch those videos. That is the only way that your teachers can help you. That's the only way that they give you instructions is if you log on to watch the videos. On goal day, that's when you have your application day. That's when you will do your work. Uh, virtual students, you should be working six to seven hours a day. It's like a regular school day. Um, take advantage of when your teachers have Zoom hours. They have those Zoom hours for a reason for you to be able to log on to ask questions. My initial credit, Apex virtual students. Again, you should be working six to seven hours on Apex every day. It is, should be like a regular school day. We have several options for help. Um, every Friday, the academic coaches are on Zoom to answer any questions that you have. Um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you have social studies a teacher, you have an English teacher and a math teacher that is on Zoom that can help you. They're on from 1245 to 115. Um, we send you an email um, every Tuesday and Thursday with the link. Be sure that you take advantage of the link. Um, I've emailed you goal dates. So our first goal date was the 21st um, initial credit uh, APEX students to have one class done. Our next goal date is on the 26th. You want to make sure that you are trying to reach those goal dates so that you can earn all of your credits at the end of the semester. Um, when you need a quiz unlocked, be sure that you email your teacher. Tell them the name of the quiz and the unit number. Um, for all of our virtual students, here's some steps to become a good virtual student. Uh, communicate with your teachers, communicate with your team. You have to reach out to ask for help. Schedule a time. I met with a student earlier. He said he gets up at nine o'clock and he sets an alarm to work like one hour on each class. So schedule times and schedule breaks as well. We, we don't expect any student to work for six hours straight, but you need to schedule time. Um, have a place, a designated place to work. Get up, take a shower, get dressed like you're going to school, work in you know, at the kitchen table, work outside at the patio, work at the desk in your room, just find a designated place um, for you to work. Um, record what you're doing. So if you've submitted assignments, especially our, our virtual students, if you submitted assignment, maybe jot down what assignments that you submitted so that if you see that you had, it hasn't been graded, you know which assignments you have, um, that which assignments you've submitted and then reach out for support. You have a team here, your flight crew, we are here to support you. We have Canvas um, uh, support, we have um, Zoom support. Reach out and take advantage of that support. And then also at the bottom, you'll see some academic resources. Khan Academy is great for math help. Ask Rose, Rose Holman has students, live students who will help you that specialize in math and science. So if you have questions, you can call 1-800-ASK-ROSE and a student will be on the other end, a college student will be on the other end to help you with those questions. So we've tried to put in place supports to help you be academically successful. Now our hybrid students, you have expectations as well. So these are our in-person students. Um, you attend on your designated day. Black um, students for black schedule, um, A through K. Gold schedule is L through Z. You receive on the Sunday night message. Um, Mr. Shepler lets you know which day it is. I send out on Canvas a reminder of which day it is. Make sure you, you come to school on your assigned day. Make sure you wear your mask. Our uh, hybrid students, your virtual day is not a day off. It is a work day. You need to make sure you take attendance. You have to take your own attendance and then you work. Again, it is not an off day. It is a work at home day. Make sure that when you're in person, you're attending all your classes, that you're asking questions, that you prioritize the most important um, tasks that you need to get done. The days that you are here, that is your day to make sure that you understand everything that is going on. 
So for both our virtual and our hybrid students, our goal is just to make sure that you are academically successful, make sure that you take advantage of all your resources and reach out if you need any help. So as Mr. Jacob shared with you guys data from um, last year, we want to make sure that we are continuing on with our momentum from freshman year. So we want to make sure that you guys understand that all of the credits this semester count regardless of what learning option you're a part of. So virtual, in-person students, and APEX credit earning students are earning the credit in December that will count towards your graduation count of credits and your GPA. So please make sure that you're working hard no matter where you're doing that, whether you're at home or in school. We want to make sure that you are getting that taken care of and taking care of business. We want to make sure that everyone has at least 15 to 20 credits at the end or in December so that we are on track for graduation. Several of you have asked about testing and know that there's an I-STEP test out there, but the good news for the class of 2023 is that there's no standardized testing this year. You are not required to take the I-STEP test. First-time biology students will be taking the biology I-STEP. There are a few sophomores that have not taken biology yet because you either moved in um, to Warren and hadn't taken biology or just didn't fit into your schedule correctly last year and so you're taking biology for the first time, you will be taking the biology I step in the spring, but no one else will be taking any tests this year. Um, normally we do offer the PSAT test to 10th graders, but because of some changes with COVID, there we're not offering that to 10th graders. You will have an opportunity to take the PSAT test as a junior. Um, next October. So, and that's when it counts for um, merit-based scholarships. So don't worry, you're not missing out on anything by not being able to take the PSAT this year. So please make sure you're working hard in your classes to earn those credits and to work towards your GPA. And we will let you know when the next upcoming standardized testing is going to be taking place for sophomores. Ms. Rhodes, if you would like to talk to us about graduation pathways. Thank you. As we continue our flight to graduation in 2023, we must discuss the pathway to get there. In addition to credits earned toward graduation, new for the class of 2023 are graduation pathways, which include three boxes which must be completed. The first box, which is box one, are earned credits toward diploma. So that's gonna be your core 40 diploma, your technical honors diploma, or your Indiana Academic Honors Diploma. So earning one of those diplomas. Box two is gonna be learn and demonstrate employability skills. And that's gonna be achieving one of those bullet points that you see. And Ms. Shoring and I, as we go into classrooms towards the end of the semester next year, we'll describe those a little bit more and talk about some of those options. But that's going to be a project-based learning experience, which you can achieve by taking various classes that are offered here at the high school or at our career center. The second bullet point is gonna be a service-based learning experience. So that could be participation in a club for an entire year, completing a full season of a sport, participation in National Honor Society, Eagle Scouts, or JROTC. The final bullet point is work-based learning. And that's gonna be various of our upper learning level classes offered in the Career Center or employment of at least 75 hours, which will be have, have to be documented. The final box is our post-secondary, excuse me, post-secondary ready completion. And that's gonna be one of the bullet points as well. That could be earning the honors diploma. The next bullet point is a certain score in the ACT or SAT which most students will take their junior or senior year, a 31 or higher on the ASVAB exam, career technical education courses, and those you'll begin taking your junior or senior year, and you'll have to take advanced courses in the same pathway. The first course will be your junior year, and the second course will be your senior year in the same pathway. The next bullet point is an industry certification in the Career Center. AP or dual credit classes, or locally created pathway. Again, Ms. Shoring and I will work very closely with your students starting in scheduling this year to make sure our students understand these pathways and making sure they are completing all boxes 
to earn their pathway. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rhodes. I would like to ask you a couple of questions. We have some top 10 frequently asked questions, and so we'd like to get those answers to you today. Um, Ms. Rhodes, can my student change their current schedule? Based on their student scheduling at the end of the final year, the schedules are final, so we will be keeping the schedules finalized and we will not be adjusting schedules for the current semester. But can I switch my student from virtual to in-person or vice versa? As of now, we are not doing any changes to the student's current learning options. However, after fall break, families will be able to change their current learning for semester two. Ms. Bellamy, can you help us answer the question, what do I do if my student is not feeling well in the morning? We will call the main office at 317-532-6200, that's the normal school number. You will press one for attendance, give your student's name, um, spell their name, give your student's grade and the nature of their absence, whether it's a funeral, they're not feeling well, um, a doctor's appointment, whatever the reason is, you'll state that on the voicemail and the attendance secretary will um, mark their attendance and also forward any information to the 10th grade office. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Bellamy. Uh, Ms. Schwerin, what do, when does the nine weeks end? Mr. Jacob, the nine weeks is coming to an end very quickly at the end of this week, Friday, September 25th. So that's our next check-in for grades for the students to see where they're at and if they're on track. Our semester ends in December on the 17th, and that's when your grades will go on your transcript and your GPA will update for the first time this year. Thank you, Ms. Farron. Okay, what about if I'm having trouble with my Chromebook issues, my brother or my sister knocked my Chromebook down or it's not charging or it's not working, what do I do? Well, it depends on if you're a virtual student or if you're an in-person student. So if you're having Chromebook issues and you're a virtual student, you can go to the Moorhead Community Center, which is located at 8400 East 10th Street, Monday through Thursday from 11 to 1, and we have technology there to assist you with any of your Chromebook issues. If you're an in-person student, you can stop by the MediaPlex on the day that you're here in the building anytime before 9 a.m., and technology will be able to help you with your Chromebook issues here in the building. Thank Ms. You. Bush, are there extracurricular activities starting up yet? Um, we are excited that some of our extracurricular activities are slowly beginning to um, start. So what I would suggest is that you would email or reach out to the coach or to the sponsor to see if that after school activity has started and what the um, guidelines are for those after school activities. And what if my grades are not correct? What do I need to do? Okay, so if you feel like your grade is not correct, the first thing I would do is um, go to your grade book in Synergy and check to see that all your assignments, all the assignments that you have submitted, you've been given credit for. And if not, then you go to your submitted assignments. If you actually submitted it, then you'll be able to see that you submitted your assignment. And then just email your teacher and let your teacher know, Mr. Jones, um, I received a zero out of 100 for my essay, but I submitted it on whatever the date and time is. And then just have that discussion with your teacher and let them know that you've submitted the assignment, but that you do not see that it's been posted. And then you all can work it out together from there. Ms. Bellamy, can you answer if they still, if parents still need to come into the building to pick up their student if they're leaving early for an appointment? Yes, you will still come to door one and check in at the security desk. You will give them your name so they can verify that you are a parent or guardian on the student's pickup list. If you have someone picking up your student who is not on their synergy list, you will need to call the office and let us know that this person is coming to pick them up. If this is going to be a, um, a habit, you want to put them on the contact list and fill out a change of information so that we don't have to contact you each time um, this person comes in. Um, because in the event that you do not answer, we cannot let them leave the building with someone who is not on their contact list. Um, you'll also want to either send a note, you can email a note, or send a note with your student early in the day if they're leaving in the afternoon, as we do get quite busy. So you can call us directly at 
317-869-4601 or via email directly to my email at jbellamy at warren.k12.in.us and we will get the pass to your student early so that you're not having to wait and they will meet you at door one at the security desk. Thank you. And we, if you are wondering how you can check your students' grades, you can access your students' grades using the parent view. So if you were with us in Warren last year, you're familiar with the parent portal. And if you had a parent portal account, you should have had your new parent view account information mailed to you over the summer. Um, there is a link on the slide, or you can go to the Warren webpage and um, type in the search parent view and there is a how to video on how to get your information so that you can access your students grades. It's a great resource. You can not only look at grades, but discipline and attendance as well. And it also is a way for you to find out who your students teachers are and how to contact them. And Miss Bush for the last um, question. How do I buy tickets to athletic events this year. Um, the first thing I do I would do is suggest that you follow Warren Central Athletics on social media social media whether that's Facebook or Instagram um, follow Warren Central Athletics and then they will post a link a go fan link and then you can purchase your tickets online that way and that's for students and adults as well there are a limited number of tickets that are available because of COVID and the percent of people that you can have in attendance and then once you come to the game you'll show on your phone that you've purchased a ticket, they'll scan you and then let you in. Go Warriors. Thank you, Ms. Bush. And if you could just talk about our final slide about um, the Center for Leadership Development. I am excited to talk about uh, the Center for Leadership Development. I am a 1991 graduate of the CLD program. And it's just an awesome program that helps students not only be successful in school, but just in life. There's a variety of programs that they have. They have mentoring programs. Um, it starts, their sophomore year, I think is a great year to get started. There's a 13 week program and you attend uh, one night a week and they just give you study skills and then different life skills. And once you finish that first program, then there are several different programs um, that you can become a part of. It's a excellent networking opportunity and it allows students to surround themselves with other students who are like-minded who want to be successful in school. There is a link that says CLD commercial that you can click and it gives you a lot of information about the CLD program. There's also SAT free ACT and SAT prep programs and classes that CLD offers. Thank you very, very much, uh, Ms. Bush. As you guys all know, this has been a very unusual year, but I want to thank everybody, our administration, and everything that they've done to make sure, one, that our students are safe and they are ready and prepared to learn. I want to thank our teachers for all the effort and all the work that they've done to make sure it works and that we rise to the occasion. We are warriors and we always excel when adversity comes our way. And we need you guys to continue to support us you know, there will be changes and there are going to be struggles like Mr. Shabla principal says is under construction. So we are doing the best we can to make sure that one, our students are safe, our teachers are safe, our staff are safe, and two, that this is a safe and learning environment, that our students are coming to school learning and those that are virtual are receiving all the resources and support that they need, you know, to be able to continue to learn. This flight, started with you and is going to end with you and the parents. I just want to thank our cohort team as well for everything that they are doing for our students and thank you again everyone.